Hello, everybody. It is Badger Wild, and we are back with another Space Engineers video. <clears throat> Today's going to be a little different video than I normally make. Uh, this is the video after the Obsidian Bounty was unfortunately all the progress that I made was destroyed when my computer decided to kick the butt bucket and my Space Engineers universe collapsed upon itself. But <clears throat> as with all things, repetition is within science, and so the universe is back. And therefore, I have to restart the Obsidian Bounty. So, I decided I would work on showing you guys where I was going with the Obsidian Bounty right now and what I've gotten done building it back. Because I've added some upgrades and I thought I would just catch everyone up. And then the next video on the Obsidian Bounty will be me actually building on it. So, just to be frank, switch around here. And uh, this 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 will come later. Uh, this right now, you, you can see this as our graboid miner. The idea was to build an asymmetrical ship that this miner could fit inside. And so that's what I've been doing here. Now, this looks like a jumbled mess, but there's a whole lot of things going on here. Because after fixing everything and rebuilding the refinery area, which I decided to start there first... I began to do a little bit of experimentation over the weekend and <clears throat> kind of found some details. This is, all, this is not just me showing off what has been completed. It's also me showing off what you can do as a builder in building your own system. So what we have here are four refineries, all with yield mods on them, because this is a refinery ship. It's designed to go in, refine all the materials. I am going to add a assembler to this so that we can assemble just a few basic parts but other than that let me let me show you uh as they say on the slingshot channel let me show you its features so <clears throat> entering in here i've got to fix this bottom ramp down here so don't worry about that you can see we've got this thing designed to where i can get to stuff i've also got oxygen generation here and storage so we've got lots of stuff we can get to now the cool thing about these um, refineries, and I'm going to show you what this what I've done here. The big problem I had last time when I was building the Obsidian Bounty, originally, was I couldn't build it in such a way where I would have an easy time fixing the yield module should something like a railgun go through and hit the yield modules. So I needed an easy way to fix that. <clears throat> Lo and behold... I came up with this, having just little bays and then stacking in as many options to run this thing as possible. So as of right here, this thing has 10 batteries on this one ship. We've got 10. We've also got four refineries, <clears throat> four oxygen tanks, and four oxygen hydrogen generators. So this thing can literally mine and refine anything when we get done. We've got the refinery capability to refine any ore. We've got the hydrogen ability, the H2O2 generators to refine as much ice as we possibly want. So this thing can refine for days on end if it wants to. But this is the really cool thing I've done. And the, the it's going to create a little bit of claustrophobia, which is what I want in the ship. I want this ship to be claustrophobic as heck. Because I want it to be this ship that people get into and they're like, oh, wow, you know, it's 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 an industrial ship. It's built functional for one specific purpose. So as you can see here, I've got my handy welder out. I can work on these. And instead of putting the yield modules across ways, I put them vertically on the system. Because then all I've got to do is I've just got to hit one or two of them. And I can do that from two separate areas. And just by separating everything into two areas, uh, also, even at this distance, let me turn my HUD on here, you can see even from this distance, I could work on these from here. If it shows up on your little welding thing on the right side of the screen here, uh, yeah, you can work on it. So I have access to this battery. I have access to this module. And if I go into here, I can access this yield module. I can access this battery. And I can access this yield module. I can also access this oxygen tank. I can access the industrial refinery. I can go downstairs. We can access the H2O2 generator. 
we can access the yield module, the battery, and the other yield module down here. And by simply getting down, I can access this conveyor pipe and I can access this cross conveyor pipe. And this is just repeated in a line. Sometimes redundancy works best and that's, that's what's going on here. It's just pure redundancy. Uh, so that's all that's been happening here. I am going to put like a light in here or something, some kind of, um, a light to go in so that I can light this whole area up in each area. Probably going to put a corner lamp up here somewhere and just have it light out in kind of a dull orange glow or whatnot or yellow glow. So it looks very industrial and, and messed up. But yeah, that's that. Um, there's also, I've got these uh, conveyor junctions here to where I can now tie into a string of pipe in the back, which I'm probably going to run some kind of Jeffrey's tube that I can go work on this whenever I need to. And I'll be able to run it out. I want to put at the minimum five large cargo containers. And the first four car large cargo containers, I want to shove, I want to whitelist them to nothing but or uh, refined ore. And then one of them, I want to set it up to where it will not take any refined ore into it. So four of these can be filled with whatever refined materials we want. And then the fifth one will be for dumping. Now, like before, over here is going to be where the ships take off. We're probably going to have some pipes coming off and this is just going to become its own little individual area where I will probably put some kind of a locker room or something in here and then we'll have the ability to mess with these pipes as they go across. And then I'll just run this section along with it. So you'll still be able to see through the floor, probably do some catwalks so you can still see through the floor and just keep the aesthetic of the ship going. Over here, we're going to do the engine and I, I've got some stuff. I, I've got the engine set up how I want to do it. I've, I've figured something a little different out for engine power. But in the front, we're going to have to put some kind of auxiliary section. And I think because I'm putting two layers on this, I have the layering necessary. I could lift up into here, run that into another area, and then have a second ladder going down into a lower deck area where you could have either storage or one one of the two either storage is going to go in the bottom or top or store or it's going to be a living quarters slash medical bay cheap medical bay and a small cafeteria probably or i may just combine one of the two and then on from there will be i would like to build a two-stage bridge coming off the front of this thing just to make it look a little bit better so we got that now on to engineering and the engine room I'm going to do something like this let me hit this button here so it's a little quieter but the plan here is to run this on four of these hydrogen 10 cylinder or yeah 10 cylinder engines and these gas generators are what we're going to run the ship on <clears throat> they don't eat as much hydrogen as you think a single tank, they'll run through about a quarter of a single tank and they can recharge both of the hyperdrives. Um, there's also the part of, I'm probably going to run this mostly, probably the main thrusters, uh, main forward and main reverse thruster are probably going to be hydrogen. Maybe the rest of it's going to be hydrogen. I don't know. This thing does have 10 batteries on it, so that's not a big deal. Um, so these here would be nothing. It would just be a short trip to whatever area we were going to drop off, grab these generator or use these generators and just power up the entire ship. As long as we're not eating too much, I'm probably also going to set a small solar array on top so that we can easily just take care of business up top the ship. Also, because another reason I like this because it does fit with the cramp style of the ship. So I can still access this stuff and work on it. 
uh, whenever it needs to. That, and that's kind of the thing. I want this to be a pretty utilitarian ship that anyone can work with. So going from here, another thing I wanted to build on this ship that I'm thinking about going with is somewhere in between the area where the two ship, where the ship and the main bridge meets. I want to build a too high area with a series of welders in a donut shape, kind of a elongated donut shape. So that if one of the miners gets severely damaged, I can hit the projector on the miner, which I believe the miner has a projector on it. I do believe somewhere there's a projector. I thought it was right here. But what would happen is we could turn on the projector. That's a, I know it's got a projector here somewhere. We can then turn the projector on. We can take this ship and fly it right through the little donut in between the bridge uh, between the living quarters and the main refinery area, and it would just weld it up as it flew through. So while this is stationary, this could just fly through. And I think we're going to defend it with just two main Gatling guns. We're going to have one on top at the forward front of the bridge and one on the bottom on the back. And then this thing is going to have a type of airlock system that we can pull it up next to a, a facility or something and offload the cargo. This this will go good with that... Uh, what was it? The blue team medium shipyard that I showed off a while back, which had all the assemblers, but had none of the refinery capability, this could do it. You and your guys could basically hop in this thing, take off out to the middle of nowhere and just use the graboids for a while, grabbing small quantities of ore, shoving them into this thing. And you could turn off all the refineries, fill up something. And then while that's all full and you were still getting materials, you could then fly back and turn on the refineries and just let them run. And then they would just basically be yielding larger larger and larger quantities of ore. Uh, let me see. I think the... What is the production value on this? How much yield are we looking at on one of these? So productivity and effectiveness is 200%. So we're basically going to double all the... Whatever you put in here, whatever one material that goes in here you'll make two ingots out of. So we're actually doubling it. So what it would normally make. Which is good. That's really good. But yeah, this is just me showing off uh, the progress on the Obsidian Dawn or Obsidian Bounty. I know you guys were looking into it and are probably wondering where it's going to be. Uh, just one more update to get everything done. <laughs> Show off. Uh, also, this is not like a hydrogen mining ship it's not meant to be but it can be a hydrogen mining ship so i can just start shoving hydrogen into this thing and start building up a large supply of it if we need to and i'm just trying to get this thing to where it can solve a bunch of problems and be really utilitarian and easy to work on and easy to maintain but still get that claustrophobic work and ship kind of feel it's a work and ship that's what it does it, it works anyway folks thank you for watching this is Badger Wild saying stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video, and I am signing out.